All right, Dad, welcome to the podcast. This has uh, been a long time coming. <laughs> and uh, so just for anyone who's not aware, my dad is an Elijah Watt sales winner. Uh, his name is Joe, and I'll let him introduce himself here in a second. Uh, but basically, you know, my dad is uh, the biggest reason that I probably became a CPA, but also one of the reasons that I struggled with it because you know, as an Elijah Watt sales winner, I just assumed that my the CPA exam was hard coded into my DNA and that the CPA exam would just come very naturally to me. However, I ended up failing multiple times and it was a huge struggle for me. And you know, my dad couldn't relate because he had never failed before. And when he did take the exam, he was pretty much in the top 100 in the nation out of 68,000 people to basically get a perfect score on the exam. So it was, I had some big shoes to fill, but um, I wanted him on the podcast just to share, you know, why did he become a CPA? How did he pass in the top 100 in the nation when he sat for the exam? And then how has the CPA exam helped him throughout his entire career and even into retirement? So dad, go ahead and introduce yourself. What, are, what, what project are you working on right now? And uh, you know, just kind of share a little bit about your career leading up to when you decided to sit for the CPA exam. Sure. Thanks. Thanks, Brian. I've, I've been a huge follower of the CPA exam <laughs> uh, guide podcast, and it's a real thrill to, to actually be a part of it, be a guest guest on your program. So thank you for the opportunity. I've, I've uh, had a passion for um, telling my story to people that I think it could help. So uh, I think with the audience you've got, uh, hopefully some, some folks will walk away with some things maybe they hadn't, hadn't thought about. But, um, but I was an accounting graduate in uh, in college, went to Eastern Illinois University, and um, and I had a choice when I graduated. I could go into public accounting, or um, my brother had was an FDIC examiner, and I had had been influenced by him that he had he had had a really good experience, and so I got a job from the office of the Comptroller of the Currency, which is part of the U.S. Treasury Department, and so I decided to go the banking route, and uh, and I enjoyed that for. Uh, a number of years, had a lot of travel connected with it though, and so when I married your mother, uh, wanted to get off the road and, and landed in a, a community bank in southern Illinois. And, um, and anyway, it dawned on me uh, at some point that, man, I, I went to school, I invested all this effort into an accounting degree, and I've never sat for the CPA exam. I've never proven that, um, you know, that I learned anything. And uh, and also, I was looking at my career somewhat stagnating. Um, you know, it takes a while when you're in a small bank for openings to happen. And I thought, man, what, what could I do that would really establish myself as uh, showing that, that I'm a little bit of cut above everybody else? And so it dawned on me, like, man, that's just an obvious thing that I should, I should take the CPA exam. And um, I knew it was going to be a lot of work. And um, your mom and I wanted to start a family. And so I knew that was going to happen real soon, and so um, I thought, boy, the timing couldn't be, be more perfect than in 1984 to really pour myself into the CPA exam. So how many years into your career were you when you decided to So um, I took my first job in 1979, so okay. about five years that um, I had been uh, plugging along in the banking industry, and, and you really don't need a CPA exam uh, or a CPA certification in banking circles um, on the one hand, but then uh, as I thought about it, I thought, you know what, there's a lot of CPAs that get ahead a lot quicker that can leapfrog the normal career path, um, even in the banking industry, even though it's not required to work there like it is in public accounting. So um, so it just like every, all the stars were aligned at some point and I thought, this is it. This is the time to go for it before we start a family and uh, as, as I'm looking for a new challenge and I wanted to prove to myself that, um, that I could do something that I had never tried before. Sure. So, I mean, obviously being, you know, relatively newly married and plus working full time, I get a lot of folks who are like, ah, I just don't have time for the CPA exam. So how did you kind of determine, you know, what your priorities were? How did you, you know, make the CPA exam a priority, but then not abandon mom and then also continue to be a high performer at your work right. like how, how did you juggle that do you remember right right and it's definitely a sacrifice so um the cpa exam back then is a little different than it is today so I, you took all four parts um all at once 
And so I had a long talk with your mother and I said, hey, you know what? I'm just going to have wanted to check out for five months. It's going to fi be five months of hell and then it's going to be over and I think we're going to benefit from this. But can you live with this for five months? And she had a little uh, uh, Tupperware business going at the time. And uh, she said, yeah, yeah, I think um, I will support you in this in every way possible. Was and I in so, the picture yet? And so you were about to show up on the radar screen, <laughs> <laughs> right, right as I was getting into the study program. I believe we found out that uh, your mother was pregnant with you. So, uh, so that was super exciting. And uh, but but I, anyway, and that was just a little more uh, motivation for me to say, wow, I've got a family coming, you know, I've got kids coming. And so, so, I, so I am the reason that you're. You <laughs> so you're this. it. Yeah, you, you get all the credit for this. <laughs> so what I did, um, which I'm sure a lot of the people listening to this podcast can can relate to is uh, I wrote out note cards. And so one of the one of the key um, ways that I used my time efficiently was every time I had a break at work, I would be I would be writing out, you know, I would have those note cards that were already written out, and it would ask a question, and I would have to t say what the answer was or write it out, and then flip the uh, over to the other side of the note card to see if I got it right or not. And I had hundreds, I don't know, maybe thousands, I don't know how many note cards I had, but I went through those so many times. Um, but also, I knew I I need had forgotten a lot since it's been five years since I've been in uh, college and. So I signed up for um, the Becker CPA review program, and so that took my whole Saturdays. It's a lot. It's a lot better today with uh, the internet and the different ways that you teach. You know how you can, how you can get just get a grasp of the material. But I had to get up early. I remember Saturday mornings. I went for five months, basically, from where we lived in Southern Illinois to St. Louis. And it was about a two and a half hour drive, and we would. And I went with four other uh, candidates, and so we'd spend all day Saturday getting the material, and then we would come come back, and I would be exhausted, and I'd take Sunday off. But then the rest of the week, I was working as soon as I got home, working on all the things. I, I bought the big, I don't know if they still have the big Glime books, but it was massive. Glime <laughs> you know, CPA review. Glime's CPA review. I did thousands of Glime CPA review problems. I would work, we'd eat supper, and then... Say from six to eleven, I would study every night, you know, Monday through Friday, and then go to the Becker CPA review course uh, on all day Saturday, and then I would review the note cards every chance I got, and um, you know, it was just a dreadful, <laughs> it was a dreadful time, just dominated. But I knew the payoff, you know, that that this was this was just a five month sacrifice of my life for what I thought would benefit you know me for the rest of my career so so you were working about probably 40 to 45 hours a yeah. week plus mm -hmm. studying about five hours a night i would say yeah so that's five times uh five so 25 hours plus your entire saturday entire saturday and then, and then, you... then spot moments you know when i had breaks or over my right. lunch hour so yep. yeah it was a it was a very um defined period of time where I didn't do, I didn't do sports. I didn't do, <laughs> I yeah. didn't do exercise, uh, you know, I don't recommend that, but I, I would not. Yeah. And I, th I think you've got some good uh, things in your program where you encourage the celebrating the small wins and yep. ways to, to relax. I probably, I probably could have used your course back then. It would have helped uh, <laughs> balance my life out, but, but you were on the way and it was motivational for me to yeah. get it done. Well, yeah, the shorter, the better. That's, that's definitely my philosophy. So, I mean, at this point, mom, do you want to, you want to join the camera? I can kind of get your insight and what it was like being a pregnant gal plus being married to a CPA candidate. So, uh, for everyone on the channel, this is my mom, Nancy, and, uh, she is a huge reason why I'm a CPA as well. She homeschooled me for up and through eighth grade. I is that right? So. And then, um, yeah, I mean, she's just a huge support to the family and uh, to my dad as well. So, um, you know, just um, and something that I is so difficult because you're not an accountant. You don't understand what the CV exam was like. So what was it like being somebody from on the outside supporting somebody who is sitting for the CPA exam, if, if you have any details that you can remember? Well, I just uh, remember the timing couldn't have been more perfect because being newly pregnant, I was exhausted from being those first three months. So I would just basically go to bed early and while he was studying. So it didn't really affect us, I don't think, mm -hmm. you know, our relationship. I wasn't 
you know, and then I also, like you said, had the Tupperware business. So I'd be out in the evenings having these little parties. Sure. And so that just occupied my time. And so it really, those five months went quickly just because we were so excited about being pregnant, but also, you know, having that little business yeah. help too. And, but I just, um, I, I remember we would celebrate when he came home on Saturday night. That was our little, we would just enjoy, too. yeah, a little date night together. And so we just kind of got into that routine. And before you know it, May was there. I think he started in January and took the exam in May. Mm -hmm. And, uh, yeah, it didn't seem too painful at the time. Sure. And uh, did you did, could you fully comprehend how powerful the CV exam was you know, going to change I, your life? I don't like, think I did. Yeah. That one, you know, I thought at, I thought it was just something an extra challenge for him. He was getting a little bored at, at work, and yeah. he just wanted something a little extra. But I had no comprehension how much it was going to affect our life. That's awesome. Cool. Yeah. Thank you for sharing. Sure. So, all right. Cool. All right. Thank you. Okay, so basically you were probably studying anywhere from 25 to 40 hours, and you did this for how long? Five, four, probably four and a half months. Four and a half, okay. And so for so back then, basically you had to pass all, all four sections in a row, and then um, it was all taken over a two-day period? Uh, was two, and, two and a half days two and a half of days. exams, and if okay. you, you had to pass a minimum of two to get credit for any of it. Right, right. right. So, I mean, it's just so stressful. Do you have any memories of actually taking the exam were you know did you was it pretty was it in like a classroom setting or what was it, it was like? yeah it was it was i had to drive from carbondale where we lived to champaign illinois and uh it was this huge room i remember that and it was very sterile and you know they were very sophisticated at checking identities and um i was very nervous obviously and and uh <laughs> Uh, you Anyone know, but, throwing up in the bathroom? <laughs> you know, there was a lot of nervous uh, uh, people there, and some you could tell were walking in defeated. And, <laughs> and uh, I had put so much into it, I, I, I honestly had a lot of confidence, uh, even though I knew it, I could blow it. But, but uh, I was well prepared, and I had done everything I could. So I walked in with that confidence, saying, "You know what? If I fail this, I, I have nothing to be ashamed of because I gave it everything I had." So. Sure. Uh, so I do think I sensed I had a lot more confidence than a lot of, uh, I mean, only 10% back in that day, uh, the number was only 10% past all four parts of the exam on the first sitting. So, wow. um, so I think there was a lot of expectation that 90% of the people would not pass all parts of the exam. So obviously that impacted their preparation compared to the way I approached the exam. Sure, sure. Good deal. Um, so... You sit for the exam. How long did you have to wait to find out your scores? It was, it was several weeks, as I recall. It took, it took a while because nothing was automated. It, well, I shouldn't say there was a lot of multiple choice, so that was automated. But um, a lot of handwritten um, problems that had to be hand graded. So, uh, so it took an interminable amount of time. I think probably a month at yeah. least. Yeah. And, and scores were mailed to you? Is that Scores were mailed to us, yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. Oh, so every day I went to the mailbox yeah. with high expectations, <laughs> hoping. That... <laughs> yeah. That sounds miserable. Um, so, all right. So the the day came. You get the envelope. Share that story. So I so I came home, uh, and I think it was at lunch. I came home, uh, and your mother was working. Uh, had a, had a job where she was working about an hour away. So I I called her up and I said, Hey, I, I I'm going to open this letter. Are you okay? <laughs> I could wait until you get home, but I think. I got to open it. So, and she said, yeah, I will share the experience on the phone. So I, you know, ripped open the letter and I just couldn't believe it. I mean, uh, I mean, I felt good after I left the exam, but you know, I think all the scores were, you know, well over 90. I mean, you know, I don't, I mean, it was just an unbelievable scores. And I thought, you know, I passed all four parts. I'm, it was one and done. And, you know, and we just celebrated over the phone and <laughs> as much as you can over the phone until she could get home. And then we went out and celebrated. And so it was a fantastic, uh, life changing moment to get that letter. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's a defining moment. And I, my, uh, ultimate CPA exam guide mentees, I've started encouraging folks to record themselves right. checking oh. their scores oh. because it is, it's a moment you'll just never forget. Oh. I'm sure 
Yeah. That moment is right up there with the moment that you saw me being born. Absolutely. Like, it just, <laughs> it's, it, it's that monumental for anyone who hasn't started the process it, yet. And um, I would, yeah. If I had video equipment, I, uh, <laughs> I, I, I wish I could have had what your students have. To yeah. Build a, yeah, it's capture that moment for a future. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And I don't I wasn't I wasn't expecting to find out my score, so I yeah. wasn't recording myself either. And it's just something that I regret not doing. Yeah, there's such a mental release to mm -hmm. see that you accomplished what you set out to do. I yeah. Don't... Yeah, well and fun fact, I am just as much a CPA as my dad, even though he got a perfect score and I <laughs> scraped by with, you know, high seventies and low eighties. So that is you know, you don't have to get a perfect score to be a rock star CPA. Obviously, it helps, but uh, you know, I'm also a, a big believer in once you've passed the exam, you're you're a CPA too. So, <laughs> all right. So, I, I think something that a lot of people have, you know, they're they're a little bit worried about becoming starting this journey to pass the CPA exam because they're one, they don't want to go into public accounting, and two. You know, they, they're scared of how many hours you're going to be stuck working in the office and they're not sure if that's something that they want to do. So, you know, something as, you know, you're an author, you've written a book called Smart Money with Purpose, and you're all about developing and teaching people how to build a legacy for, you know, what what is the purpose of their life? What, what are they leaving behind? So, you know, how has the CPA exam, how has it helped you really focus and be flexible in your career so that you're spending time on what you actually want to achieve versus, um, you know, being stuck in the office all day long. Because I think that that is kind of a misconception that a lot of accountants have that they don't need the CPA because they don't want to work 100 hours a week. So I'd really love to hear your perspective on what has your career been like? How has the CPA helped? And, um, you know, are you working a million hours a week or do you have time for family? Like, how, how have you juggled that over yeah. the last decade? Yeah, great, great questions, Brian. Yeah, I, I mean, and this is where over the years, having been a bank president, I've had a chance to, you know, talk to a lot of college students about my career and give encouragement to, and, and I mean, it just, it was the seminal moment in my career. I mean, I can't put it any other way. It changed my life. Um, when I got the CPA exam, uh, when, I, when I was able to pass that, and then I shared it with my boss, the CEO of the bank that I was working at, he said, tell me again, what did you do? <laughs> <laughs> and, and so, and then my accounting firm that did the audit of my bank, uh, of course I shared it with them. Uh, and so then that partner came into my, pres my CEO and my board of directors and explained you don't understand what this guy just did. <laughs> yeah, well, uh, yeah. Tell us about the surprise letter you got. Oh, so yeah. So a couple of weeks after I got the uh, uh, notification that I passed, I got this other letter in the mail, and I thought, I wonder what this is, because I didn't expect anything. I thought, well, I passed, and and I, that was that was enough of a joy for me. You know, that's all I wanted. So so I opened this letter, and it says something about year scores were in the top hundred of the sixty eight thousand. And so we want you to come to Chicago because we want to recognize you as an Elijah Watt Sells Award winner, you know, one of only 100 out of the 68,000 that took the exam. And so I about fell on the floor. I had never even heard of Elijah Watt Sells. And I did some research on who is this guy. And found, did found you have out, to look it up in the encyclopedia or how yeah, did you do that? <laughs> yeah, I did. I honestly did. I had no idea who Elijah Watt Sells was. So, uh, so yeah, so the uh, partner of the CPA firm that did my bank audit, he was, he was so great. And he said, can I go with you to Chicago? He said, I want to come. And so we rode up on the train together. <laughs> Amtrak went through our town and up into Chicago. And uh, so I was there with all these smart people. And there was a, a number of people from Illinois that had won that year. So I was one of several from the state of Illinois that got special recognition. And so, uh, so then things started happening after that. Um, so I, you know, obviously wanted to leverage what I had accomplished. Um, that's why I did it. So I just put my resume together and updated it and did, put out some feelers. And so uh, without trying very hard, um, I was able to get a uh, offer from Pricewaterhouse. Uh, they wanted me to come and be a bank consulting specialist for their firm, uh, Deloitte Haskins and Sells. Uh, wanted me to come and be a bank auditor, and uh, we're very excited about that. A big bank in St. Louis made me a big offer. And so 
um, I was able to go in and, and talk to my boss and said, uh, you know, I'm getting some big offers now and I really like this bank, but you know, I'm going to have to do what's right for my family and that kind of talk that we all have you know, on occasion. So uh, just to give some perspective too, like what was it like living in Carbondale? Like how big so, was the town? So Carbondale was a perfect town for, for, for your mom and I. I mean, it was a college town, Southern Illinois University's there, about 25,000, and the university was 20 plus thousand at the time, and um, a lot of uh, international students, and uh, you know, we, we kind of adopted some of them, and uh, it was just a great environment to raise a family up. It's in a, a Shawnee National Forest, and you know, so it was just so many positive things, and living in the city didn't appeal to us, and yet, um, you know, when you're in your 20s and you're trying to, you know, do what's right financially, you, you have to look at your options. And so, so I did and I got, you know, the three, I'm sure I could have gotten more offers, but I thought, well, this is enough <laughs> and said, you know, I'm going to have to, I'm going to have to be moving on. So the president said, wait, wait, let me talk to our board and I'll be, I'll get back to you. And I said, <laughs> okay, perfect. <laughs> and so, uh, he called all the board members and, uh, he was going to retire in a few years. And so he came back and said, the board wants me to tell you that when I retire in a few years, they want you to be the CEO if you'll stay with us. And I say, okay, that's a, that's a good deal. So I get the quality of life I want, uh, in, you know, in banking to some extent, it's true. You don't have to work as hard. I never liked the idea of tax season, you know, that, that, that made me nervous, uh, you know, yep. working 90 hours a week and, um, the, the partners, you know, I'd worked with some of the big, at the time it was the big eight accounting firms. Um, and you know, they looked stressed out. They looked like they prematurely aged. And, you know, and I thought, you know, if you can make a really pretty good living in banking without having to work the tax season and, you know, and all the extra pressure, not, not that banking doesn't have pressure, but, sure. uh, but it was, and, but it also the idea of being involved in the community was so important to, to us. So I got to be president of the chamber of commerce and, you know, on the, involved in the rotary, not that you can't do those kinds of things and the accounting profession, but because I was a banker as part of my job. So I'd serve on the technology, um, you know, the, where they were trying to bring in high tech companies, boards like that, uh, very involved in the university. And, um, I think I was just able to sort of be an elder of the community <laughs> at sure. an early age. Uh, and that was really important to me to not only shepherd the stewardship of the bank, but also be really involved in the community, but not having a life that was so out of balance with work that I was not able to have you and, and four other kids uh, and, and really enjoy a great life in, in Carbondale. So, um, so I just, you know, it, it was just a, it was just a uh, incredible change in the trajectory of my career to put effort into this CPA exam and then to have all the pieces fall into place. And, you know, obviously you can't assure all of your students that that same thing is going to no. happen to them. But if you don't do it, it's kind of like opportunity. You have, you know, you put your effort into something like the CPA exam, prove that you are up to that task. And that sends such a signal, such a message that, you know, doors open. I can guarantee doors are open. You know, it may not be as picture perfect as what, um, you know, Nancy and I were able to enjoy, but it will open up opportunities otherwise you wouldn't have. And uh, so whenever I give career speeches, I'm, I'm just like, if you have an accounting degree, <laughs> you need to do this. It's just absolutely essential that you prove to yourself, first of all, that you can do it. And secondly, then you think about the options that it opens up and as opposed to if you don't, you know, because first thing I would think if somebody applied for a job for me and they had spent all that time going into accounting, but then they didn't have a CPA, I'd, I'd want to know what's wrong with your motivation. Why, why wouldn't you do this if you right. studied debits and credits <laughs> and <laughs> all of the other things that we learn in accounting? And so it's, it's a game changer for sure. What, what do you think the ROI is on... <laughs> <laughs> well, believe it or not, yeah. I put this in my book uh, <laughs> because I think that my advice to people always want to get into the stock market. And I say, you know what, put everything you can into yourself first before you start worrying about putting money into Microsoft or something. And the way I looked at it was uh, it costs back then, I, if I remember right, is like a thousand dollars to take the Becker CPA review course that I, that I was a part of. A little of. bit more now, but yeah. Yeah, it's inflation adjusted. It but might not be about much. the same. Yeah. Not much. 
And so that first raise, in addition to the promise of becoming CEO, I got a $10,000 raise. So that, you know, was an immediate, you know, thousand percent return on investment. And the way I look at it for the next 40 years, that $10,000 bump in my salary was built into all my other salaries that I was able to, and I even ignoring compounding, that's like a 40,000% return that, you know, even right. Warren Buffett couldn't come up with a return like that. No, no. So, yeah. so the financial return is phenomenal. Um, well, and, and I mean, I think, you know, you said you were getting bored at your job and it's like, well, how, how long would it have taken you to get to the point where you could become CEO? Yeah, it which, probably would have taken years. If ever. If ever. Yeah. Because, yeah. you know, if they hadn't recognized that they had a guy that they were bringing up with that talent <laughs> yeah you know i don't i'm not one to blow my yeah, own horn can't. a lot i'm uncomfortable you know touting how smart i am or whatever but this was a way that they didn't they weren't tempted to go outside the bank and bring some hot shot in to run right. the bank they said wow we got a guy that's you know knows our values and yet he's yeah well i mean just to use myself as an example too i was kind of in a dead-end accounting job making about forty thousand a year yeah. And I passed a CPA exam and, you know, everyone gave me a big high five, but my position didn't require a CPA. Yep. So they were like, yeah, sorry, we can't give you anything. And I'm like, you gotta be kidding me. I, I kind of like this job, even mm. though I knew it wasn't going yep. anywhere. So I was like, all right, I'm going to go try and find a job at PwC. And so I put in an application and we were still in the middle of the great recession and they hired me. And yep. it, you know, it's like that door would have never been right. open. And right. I you know, it would have taken me 10 years to be right. a manager because right. you really had to prove yourself at this company. So I think it works yeah. for Just all kinds of people. anecdotally, you know, the two of us, it, yeah. it's changed I don't think lives. we're an aberration, though. I, no. think, I think there's all kinds of these stories among CTAs. Yeah. Well, yeah. I, I don't know. Have you ever worked with a CMA? Like I, a lot of people are talking about the CMA versus the CPA. I was, I was just curious yeah. if... Um, you know, I might have worked, but it's just not something that... Um, has that much value? Yeah, I mean, not everybody knows what not everybody knows. The CPA is the yeah. degree that you're the certification that you want to get, and a CMA is good. I'm sure. I mean, yeah. it's a discipline, and if you pass it, that's great. But uh, but I would say the value of a CPA is up here, and a CMA is down here somewhere. Sure. The way I see it, and that's from hiring a lot of accountants and working with a lot of. Yeah, firm, so, so. C CPA first, then CMA if it makes sense. I would, yeah, if, if you're still interested in going for yeah. that, yeah. Cool. Um, let's see here. So, um, yeah, so, I mean, you had just this amazing career. It's taken you from southern Illinois all the way out to Montana, um, you know, being a CEO of a small community bank out there. But what, what about in retirement? Does the CPA stop helping you? After you know, after your career ends, or, or what have you? It never about that? the the dividends never stop with the <laughs> CPA. I can tell. So so um, a month after I retired, I mean, I was sort of looking at this as semi-retirement anyway, because I want to write and help people with personal finances. And uh, but a month after that, uh, there's a, a big bank. There's eleven federal home loan banks, and um, an opening came up for um, Montana. The each each state in the country has at least one representative that represents all the other banks in the state. And you sit on this federal home loan bank, which is a very lucrative position. And um, so I wrote my application out. And even though the home loan bank at the time was like 150 billion, my bank that I was running when I retired was 300 million. So you think, well, there's no way you're qualified for that. And so central <laughs> to my application was <laughs> that I can understand finances in any size. It's just three more zeros, basically. <laughs> and so, of course, I highlighted the CPA experience that I had and convinced 21 other board members of this board that I was the right guy, even though I had other, I had competition from banks that were billions of dollars bigger than the bank that I was running, but they didn't have a CPA. And so I convinced this board who made the decision uh, to put me on to replace someone who had gotten off early. Uh, so, so, and then, and then just, even though I let my license lapse, I don't have a, I'm not lic a licensed CPA, uh, but just the fact that you pass the CPA and have a CPA certificate gives incredible value to, even in like church work where somebody has financial problems and uh, wants to take advice from somebody. Well, I have a credential, or I've in the past, and that gives me instant credibility where they'll open up 
you know, what their finances are and give me the ability to speak into their life, uh, where if I didn't have that kind of credential, it wouldn't, you know, they would say, well, does he really know what he's talking about? Or is, you right. know, is he just following Susie Orman or somebody, you know, <laughs> <laughs> you know, which not that there's anything wrong with Susie Orman, but, <laughs> right. but I just, yeah. yeah, the credibility with the CPA goes into all areas of life. Um, and it just never stops paying dividends and just been, yeah. yeah, something that I am passionate about. And I'm so excited for you and all the people that you're helping that, you know, are so excited when they get the mentorship program and, you know, and celebrate the way your mother and I celebrated yeah. uh, back in 1984. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's what, what it's all about is just teaching people through experience yeah. what we've been through and just showing the benefits of, right. of, and just so that you can stay focused on what the benefits will be after this right. temporary period of sacrifice. Like I think that's, that's all it is. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. And, and you know, I mean, it took me two and a half years to pass took dad five months, but, um, you know, it's just, it's, you have to just stick with it. You have to keep studying. You have to keep yeah. going, look at it as an investment in your future. Right. It's not an expense. It's an investment. And you're literally building an asset that will provide dividends for the rest yeah. of your life. Like, I think so. I think there are a lot of people who got accounting training and have deep regrets when they get to my age that they mm -hmm. never took it. And I've never talked to anyone who made the short-term sacrifice to study for it and pass the CPA exam and that regretted it. Yeah. I mean, that's, to me, that's the bottom line. Is this yeah. worth it? If you're in that decision point, should I do this? Look, talk to the people that have done it and ask if they have regrets and talk to the people that never did it. And right. Yeah. Yeah, no, def absolutely. Yeah. I mean, my boss, she, she was not a CPA and she had to work her tail off for years yeah. to make manager and director yeah. at, at my old position. And it just, yeah. You know, the CPA is the shortcut to advancing your career as yeah. long as you play your cards, right? Yeah. Like it, it, that's not some magic pill that's going to, no. you still have to act on it. You have right. to be, right. um, you know, smart with it. And, but, and you also have to be willing to, to make moves. Like a lot of people I know are, right. they, they get stuck in their job and they're too scared to try something different. They're too right. scared to move. Right. And, you know, if you're not willing to make those types of moves, then the CPA is not going to be very valuable. No. Like no. it's, you know, you're just going to. Right. It, you won't, it'll sit there and you won't. Right. Use it. Fear is not a good career strategy for yeah. managing your career. <laughs> you have to be willing to take risks. And, yeah. 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 But I think it's really paid off for you. You kind of prioritize family and community mm -hmm. over working a right. hundred hours a week, which right. you very easily could have done. You probably could have right. made partner if you really right. wanted to, but, um, you know, it's all about figuring out the path that works best for you and what your goals are. And, right. um, so yeah, yeah. So, I mean, yeah, I just appreciate everything you've taught me over the years. And I mean, you made your career look easy. And then, you know, I graduate and I'm like, oh, yeah, I'm just going to be like dad, you know, do put in my time and I'll make president randomly somehow. <laughs> and I have <laughs> and, and it did not work out that way. But now you're CEO. But yeah, you oh. know, and and it's it's been it's you just don't know how your path is going to lead yeah. you. And it's it's fun. No. I mean, who 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 would have thought you would be changing people's career trajectory a yeah. few years ago before you came up with this idea to mentor. Yeah. Yep. And, it, and it's because I have experience failing. Yep. I know exactly. what it's like. I yeah. understand exactly what yeah. people are going through and then I know how to overcome it. And yeah. that's, I mean, that's, that's literally, I've literally built a business yeah. around, yeah. <laughs> around helping people do yeah. that. And it's literally changed people's lives. And yeah. I mean, it, to me it's, and I mean, I, I know this is true too. It's like when, uh, you know, I helped this gal Marie pass a CPA exam and she's a, a CFO of a, or a CEO of a not-for-profit up in Washington, DC. And she tried for eight years to pass the exam and, you know, she joined my program and within a year she had passed. That's and it was amazing. because she just never had anyone right. to teach her how to right. study. Right. And, you know, I, I think it was you that taught me about Thomas Paine and his invisible hand concept. So it's like, you know, I failed the CPA exam, figured it out then taught somebody else how to do it. And she's CEO of a uh, not-for-profit in DC, which helps ch feed children and get families off the streets. Right. And because she's now a CPA, yeah. she's eligible for a lot more grant money, which means more children are being fed, yeah. fewer families are on the yeah. street because of you know our help. You know, you helped me pass the exam, I helped her pass the exam, yeah. and now there yeah. are children who are being fed. Like yeah. it's, it's just such a cool, 
license that it just I mean it, it changes people's it lives yeah. and then they go on to impact the world yeah. in amazing ways that we have no yeah. idea yeah no and you know I mean just think of all the small businesses you've helped over the years as right. a community banker right. and right. you know it's 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 pretty amazing the money is in, I mean we all need to make money in order to live but it's the higher purpose that is so yep. fulfilling especially when you get to my the end of my career to look back on it and think about the difference we made in the community and in the lives and it's going to be the, it is already the same for you you're looking sure. back just like that story um yeah, yeah it's the higher purpose that we have in our calling in our job and and yeah and even though you had a rougher time than i did getting yeah. through it it prepared you <laughs> for talking to people like that that failed you know for eight years before right. she accomplished this goal so yeah yeah it's a wonder it's a wonderful um work and i'm glad that you found the niche to help people benefit from you know from what i was able to enjoy sure. awesome well if people want to follow you where do they go so i have a website smartmoneywithpurpose.com and if you'd like to sign up for a I, I try to write a weekly blog post i cover a variety of topics uh either having to do with smart money on how to manage our money in a smart way and avoid some or some of the mistakes or the whole idea of purpose in life that uh, I have this feeling that strong belief that acute, just the blind accumulation of more and more money is not a very fulfilling life that it has to be tied into purpose and uh, how we should be structuring our finances in order to help us find our calling in life, what we're on this earth for to help other people, what we were just talking about. So, so I'd love to have new subscribers. If you would sure. like a weekly blog post with the, a, a semi-retired banker, I'd be happy to uh, <laughs> share with you some thoughts along those lines each, each week at smartmoneywithpurpose.com. Awesome. All right. Thanks, Dad. I appreciate your time. You bet. And uh, yeah, excited for this to go live and hopefully it okay. changes some lives. I so. hope so. All right. Thanks.